debate and go ahead and approve or reject that particular motion. We'll see how that goes. I'll take your final words by Joseph Hango. Well, let's listen to the minority leader when he addressed that press conference earlier today. It will be very brief. Man, you see, I can't remove that too. Then bring a mask. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, I'm supported by my colleagues. Just to assure you that we are not an obstructionist group. We are very positive and we think that the President's letter of 21st January 2021 submitting to Parliament list of his ministers for his new government deserves the urgent attention of the Appointments Committee. But noting what has been submitted to Parliament, it only reminds us in the minority group that President Nana Adudankwa, if he was to set up a 1D1F in recycling, he would be a very good entrepreneur in that <laughs> enterprise. We just see recycled list, no new impetus, no new thinking, no new innovation. It reminds us of Ghana still living in 1997. The country has come very far, and ministers should not just be comfortable. I don't want to believe that President Nana Dudankwa does not have the courage and political will to reshuffle, because you all witnessed what happened in the last four years. He just couldn't do that. And even at an opportunity of change of government, he doesn't appear ready to do just that. So there's no new impetus no new hope and as i've said we've just seen a recycled list what struck us most as a group even though we interrogate those matters at the appointments committee is the ambiguous creation of a new ministry of public enterprises uh, why ministries themselves are public enterprises and state-owned institutions are public enterprises not a while ago he came to parliament to pass a new legislation, putting all those enterprises under a new legislation. One would have thought that he would have used the rendition of that law, Act 990, Act 990 to create the new Ministry of Public Enterprises. Suffice it to add that we are not dissatisfied with the cut, but the cut will be better measured when we have the full list and full complement of his ministers. But we are ready to interrogate not just the CV, but the record of his appointees. What they must do clearly is to make sure that copies of handing over notes are, are, made, are made available to us as required by the Presidential Transition Act, Act 845. I'll be happy to answer any questions. <laughs> So that's what Joseph Opoku Gakpo was referring to. You've heard it from the horse's own mouth, if I should put it that way. Um, let me wrap up with Joseph uh, Opoku Gakpo. Hello, Joseph. Gifty, I can hear you. Right, so we've seen uh, what has happened today. The Essentially, the conversation or the debate on the uh, uh, motion could not uh, uh, come off, which you have said what should happen on Tuesday. Uh, what, what more should we expect uh, in the coming week? You know, there were a number of uh, issues that came up on the floor today. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, the Tamale North Member of Parliament, Hassan Suhini, mm. requested that the issue having to do with the babies who'd gone uh, missing and were allegedly stolen at some hospitals and Yoko investigating that. He thinks that regardless of the fact that there are no ministers, uh, Parliament should be interested in that issue 
and interrogate officials of Yoko and get more details on it and be able to follow up and ensure that the right thing is done. Uh, that wasn't the only request. Another NDC MP requested that with the rising COVID-19 cases that we are seeing, and particularly the issue having to do with the Noguchi Memorial Institute and some allegations that some tests were being allegedly falsified as went around on social media. Um, Parliament should take interest and interrogate the necessary officials there and get the details on what exactly is being done to safeguard the lives of Ghanaians. Uh, those two requests actually went through uh, with the expectation that one way or the other, the, the, there will be a direction on how the House can begin interrogating the, these issues even before the ministers are appointed. Because you know, per the requirements of the standing orders, when it comes to the floor of the House itself, it has to be a minister who has to respond to issues. And not just that, when it comes to um, the workings of various committees, they can delve into matters at the level of the committee. But even now, there aren't other committees of parliament being set up and all. So the, the expectation is that one way or the other, leadership will give a directive on how going forward, some of these issues can be dealt with even before the committees are established and even before ministers get appointed. And, and, and so uh, we're waiting to see how the House will deal with some of those specific issues going into next week. But next week, the focus mainly is on the House approving the, uh, se the, 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 the selection of other committees, including uh, committees, uh, members of the ECOWAS Parliament and members of the African Union Parliament and a number of others. But there were further announcements in relation to COVID-19 in Parliament today by the Speaker, uh, Alban Bagbin, asking MPs to take the COVID-19 situation more seriously. And he indicated that from next week, Parliament will be going virtual so that then from everywhere, MPs can monitor proceedings and participate in proceedings. And he gave, gave the indication that they are considering a number of uh, other venues for setting, including the tent where the inauguration of the president eventually happened. So all of that is likely to unfold next week, even as the House takes more stringent measures to avoid a situation of the spread of COVID-19 in the House. We'll see how that goes and how they get to vote.